Good day and welcome to the Context Podcast. My name is John Colin Namene. This is the podcast where we bring you a review of stories that took place last week or over the past week and that were published by the Namibian newspaper making for interesting headlines. Now I am joined of course by my colleague Enoke Kaumba. Hi Enoke, how's it? I'm doing good. How are you? It's been a interesting week. Uh, uh, seeing as last week it started, uh, we were already, you know, coming from a victory week again. I mean, it's been a nice weeks. The girls, Dion Hotto scoring, um, and then uh, the lady winning that uh, beauty pageant. I can't remember which one. Supra national. Yeah, also I'm I'm not quite uh, familiar with with the beauty pageant, but it, apparently it's a big thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's so a very big thing. The country has been in uh, very good spirits of late, you know, especially on the sports side of things. But also um, with with the with the pandemic, I mean, we are slowly but surely moving and phasing out of the third wave, which is a good thing. Uh, but it is obviously also very important to note that we shouldn't, you know, let our guard down. down. Yeah. We are still in the fight of a very, very crazy uh, pandemic. Uh, we're in a war, actually, against yeah. an invisible enemy. To take the words out of my president's mouth. Um, but yeah, it was, it was, it was a beautiful week, man. I think this week hasn't been that bad as well. Obviously, the you know these little negative things that we pick up on as newsmakers. Yeah. Um, but that's just tell us telling everyday stories, you know. But otherwise, I think it's been. A great two weeks for Namibia. August is ending of uh, the year of August. Note. Yeah, the year of August. <laughs> <laughs> they could, they don't call it the year of August <laughs> for, for nothing. nothing. Exactly. <laughs> no, it's ending off on a very very good note. Um, surprisingly, because August has always been known as a sort of weird, you know, yeah. first of dark month, and I'm quite I'm quite impressed at how um, how much love it's shown us. It's Women's Month, most. It's Women's Month. Yeah. Amandla to all the women. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The power, power. And of what? course, we saw Heroes Day also being commemorated this. Uh, this week um uh, yeah but some of us being uh, as of this uh, working for this profession i don't know whether it was the other way around it chose us or we chose it um uh, we saw we didn't see a holiday but uh, anyways um it was good uh, to be part of this year's um just to be alive yeah no <laughs> it's an achievement for definitely. me and, mm. and obviously um we are alive on 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 the backs and the shoulders of those who you know, fought for us. Um, so, so I mean, they're not here now, but obviously, you know, we are showing our respects to them. Uh, we are uh, appreciative and grateful for what they've done for the country. Um, yeah. And we, we also shouldn't forget to, you know, praise our living heroes. Yeah. Um, I think that's something that human beings tend to neglect and only praise people and eulogize people yeah. when they have passed away. But anyway, um, enough about me and you. Let's get to why we are here in the first place. We're here to give you reviews of stories that made headlines in the Namibian newspaper. To start off, we are business owner. COVID-19 is something that we, we understand is a, an outbreak to our government and to ourselves. But now it's affected our businesses. We were supposed to be open 10 to 10. Shabin operators have given the government until Wednesday, this was on Monday obviously, um, they gave the government until Wednesday to respond to their petition pleading for on-sale alcohol consumption, with many saying that their livelihoods are now on the verge of collapse. Look at how they are. They are just, it's a stone, the whole of that area, and even the, that stone can able to fall, and then these people can, can die any, any time. Any time. You can hear the person is dying because of the stone is falling over their heads. All right, we also look at the story of a woman and her husband who spoke to the Namibian this week about how they have been living under a rock for the past 10 years. In another story, a baby burned to ashes, unfortunately, while her mother went out to go buy some meat. It's a dustbin. It's buffoonery, it's insensitivity, it's provocative, and it belongs to the whole dustbin. And on a sad note, the former Minister of Sports, Kazenambo Kazenambo, dies. Now, to get into the details of the stories, Shibin owners gave the government until Wednesday to respond to their petition uh, pleading for on-site alcohol consumption. Now, last week, Shibin owners countrywide staged a demonstration petitioning the government to revise the current regulations 
to allow them to sell alcohol on site from 9 o'clock in the morning to 10 o'clock in the evening on Mondays to Saturdays and from 2 o'clock in the afternoon to 8 o'clock on Sundays. Now, the current regulations state that um, they're only allowed to sell alcohol on a takeaway basis from Mondays to Fridays and um, they basically prohibit it from selling alcohol on, 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 on site, um, which is... I mean, I understand why uh, mm. that is the case, you know, obviously because uh, people don't really see it, but um, whenever alcohol is in play or around people, um, you know, we don't make the best decisions as human beings. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Right? so I, I, I understand why alcohol is a great factor or big factor just in terms of being strict and, limit and, and, and limiting a few things because alcohol... Um, obviously, you know, disturbs your thought uh, thought pattern, and by virtue of that, you will eventually start taking off your mask, lowering it and lowering it and lowering it until it's off. You start hugging people again, you start kissing, start people promising again. people jobs, start promising people <laughs> jobs, telling people that they the love of your lives, all of that. Alcohol <laughs> does all of that, so I sort of understand why um, the Ministry of Health and Social Services are still a bit um, uncertain on whether you know alcohol should be given the sort of freedom that it had pre-corona and okay what are your thoughts on the story my take on the story is um i think as much as you say that but then one needs to look at it uh, okay this is uh, being not my opinion but one needs to look at it from the fact that uh, they are also now in a situation of uh, it's a catch-22 for them it's either they die from covid or they die from being hungry yep. and uh, which is what this uh, whole situation has brought now it, it has brought this thing wide 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 open as it, it needs to be talked about and uh, there needs to be a like a tangible solution that needs to happen for them because um as the one of their representative was speaking fortunately for us was speaking on the conversation uh, on friday and um it was uh, good to see um, uh, him saying because I think that uh, for this situation to to maybe uh, uh, reach uh, a sort of a, a, a possible agreement, I think people need to get vaccinated. That's my opinion because of what research I've done, and uh, I think it's 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 well it's 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 safe to 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 say for me that uh, for they need to get vaccinated. And it was good to see when the representative was saying that uh, um, they are willing to, if they they are given the mandate to promote uh, a vaccination campaign, they will be they will, they will be doing that. And uh, for me, that's 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 something that I picked out from this. And uh, also, like I said, it has brought a whole new different way of uh, how we look at the things because it's either they die from COVID or they die from hung from hunger. So yeah, I think it's your life versus your livelihood. Yeah. yeah. So. It's 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 very interesting. It's interesting that you you pick up the point of uh, the vaccination. I was speaking to Christy Calder on the COVID nineteen podcast, and he was saying that we need to start coming up with incentives yeah. and ways um, to sort of um, either you know push the agenda of herd immunity, or at the very least just find ways to get back to normal. But obviously, right now the only safe option we have is herd immunity and we can only get that through vaccinations i mean the, the unsafe option is obviously just everyone getting corona and other dying yeah. from it or you know recovering from it but that is unsafe because it leaves out the vaccination so he said um you know should bean owners and bars owners should consider perhaps you know getting their um staff em or the employees vaccinated and themselves vaccinated mm. just to limit the risk of you know potentially succumbing to severe COVID 19 complications you know, but also, um, I mean, these should be known as are claiming that they are being treated unfairly compared to restaurants, um, hotels, uh, casinos and, and, and nightclubs where obviously alcohol consumption is permitted on site. And but it is fair, but obviously I think the issue we need to understand here is that a Shabin environment is very uncontrollable. Oh, you understand? Yeah. It's extremely uncontrollable. The issue with the restaurants, hotels, casinos and nightclubs is that there is some form of, 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 of control because there are securities, there are managers, you know, all of that. So it's 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 an interesting interesting story. I mean, on the one hand, Shabins make up a huge part of our economy. Yeah. On the other hand, also it's it's, it's a hot spot, man. Yeah, this is one of the things that we spot. that we've spoken about. If you if you get a chance to listen to the conversation, please do that. It was on Friday, but it's on our social media platform. Uh, the guy that was on the conversation mentioned that uh, they have uh, you know jukeboxes, uh, um, um, uh, these jackpots, pool tables, and all of that. So the thing is uh, they want to also be given a chance. I think for him, he's saying that they don't have a chance to also 
have a structured uh, situation. They want the government to meet them halfway uh, to say to say that okay, fine. Uh, this is the problem that we're having. And also, they say they are not demanding because in the newspaper it says they, they were demanding, but they are not actually demanding, apparently. Mm. They are just pleading to the government that, okay, uh, let us meet each other halfway in how we solve this problem by not creating another problem for us, you understand? No, definitely. So we mentioned that if we are given the mandate uh, to uh, spearhead the vaccination campaigns, fine. Then if we are given the mandate, we can also be able to to also move a have a structured a structure in such a way that that's avoidable but just like you said very very difficult man it's very difficult in she been i know and uh also when we are drunk we, we've mentioned this so interesting story i'm um, i'm looking forward to how it uh, plays out definitely i'm looking forward to it as well and i really hope there is a positive amicable yeah. solution to this now in the intro in okay you spoke about a woman and her husband and five children that have been living under a rock is this literally or figuratively <laughs> i think all the above <laughs> i think the headline itself speaks um they do live under a rock and uh, the concept itself it also fits because it's been for 10 years so they've been missing out no they've they been, have they've they have. been missing out on services and um such i don't know how to call it sad or informative because in the story um uh, this lady jacobin Bukers, um uh, her home apparently is made of pieces of rock that act as a wall. So they use nature to build their house. So they build their house around nature. Uh, now the shack is situated at a Tla, Tla Habanello 3 on the outskirts of Vinduk in the Samora Michelle constituency near Goriahab. Now the rocks look like they're about to collapse. Yo, 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 yo. That's, that's crazy, man. Yeah, it's very crazy. But yeah. one of the things I hope this story, what this story does is that it opens up the, uh, to, to people who, who need to help them because they are missing out on lots, lots of services. Um, her husband, Luther Uaweza, used to get odd jobs in Winduk, which have since dried up. We all know COVID. We're just talking... And now you see the ripple effect that it has brought. We we're just talking about the shibins now, but those people out there, they are really, really suffering. And um, I do not understand why for 10 years, um, for 10 years, still nobody has been able to do something. Of course, they say no government official has, has helped them. One interesting thing I might say to, I want to say about this story is that uh, I hope it really uh, helps them because it was really, I didn't, I didn't look at the videos before i looked at the story so i looked at the story itself and i could see already um how they live so it's a uh, kudos to timo for you know narr narrating it and uh, you know describing it i mean if i had a lot of money i think i was i would be touched and and, and you know help them because you they speak of them cooking rice and then rice without anything no soup just adding fat there i mean i wouldn't want to imagine it's it's uh, yo it's crazy man i mean the quote-unquote house um that they're now living has no tap there's no toilet facilities no electricity the mm. family only like you said relies on wood um for heat to cook on or traditional three-legged stove um, made of stones imagine living like that in 2021 man I yo, mean, that's no. ridiculous but also it speaks to the issue of um, rural urban migration, you know, yeah. this this family or um, Jacopin Bierkes herself um, says she was in search for a better life after her family was evicted from a farm near Rebirth. And obviously the only place you, you can find a better life is Vinduk, yeah. you know, but how many people are in that situation? We have at least, I think, 10,000. Even the story itself says 50,000 households uh i have limited uh, basic services look at look at that the, the ten thousand people every year and okay ten thousand people move to vinduk from rural areas in search of a better life and um in as much as we all say that government should do something about it and they should they're mandated to do that i mean yeah. that's why we put these people in power i think that it becomes very difficult when there's a concentration of people in one area mm. and the, the government is expected to do everything for them you understand we have to provide uh, toilet services we have to provide water we have to provide electricity, electricity we have to provide food we have to provide enough jobs we are already suffering from an unemployment crisis ne not not even to mention COVID-19 the, the unemployment situation in the country has been dismal since independence I think yeah so rural to urban migration is, is a factor that I think stops us from moving forward but also is a factor that 
um, impedes government from doing what it's supposed to do. It's always been a problem. But that's yeah. also not to say the government should not sleep or the government should sleep on, on this just because rural to urban migration is a difficult thing to handle. They should come up with strategies to assist people like um, Jacopina and, and one would say in the one would say rural to urban migration can they can even blame it on them because the reason why they are leaving their place is because it's not developed precisely. it's not having the services precisely. so they come to where the services are I think are. that's the root cause yeah. I mean nobody would want to leave their place if their place is everything yeah. you can't be living in 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 CES or wherever in, in, in Namibia and not have access to water and electricity and want to stay there obviously you'll move to places like Vinduk to places like Rehobot places like Swakopmund or Valfus Bay to find better services for you. Mm. We unfortunately we're not living in the 1800s anymore where we can survive on a rock, you know, and kill animals and eat them and all of that. We are mm. now mm. used to technology and if you leave people out they'll find a way to come in. Yeah, yeah. Oh. It's, it's a crazy form of othering, man. Yeah, such a how do we is it a sad story or in for I don't know, such really um for me, I mean people walking uh, seven I mean, uh, there's a Lena in grade seven that lives with them, and then they walk a distance to school. In all 2021, of 2021, my friend. Yeah. In and not just in 2021, in Vinduk. In Vinduk. Capital city. Imagine. Of Namibia. The other side of the highway is a sad story, my friend. Yeah. It really is. Now, moving on to another story that we had in our headline about a baby burning to ashes while her mother went to go buy some meat. When 30-year-old Monica Gephardt left a two-month-old baby on the bed at home to allegedly go to the market and buy meat for dinner, the last thing she expected was that she would not see her child alive ever again. That is extremely heartbreaking. Um, so, Monica Gephardt, who uh, lives with her baby and the baby's father in Havana, Katatura, says that when she went to a market, a lady in the neighborhood ran towards her, screaming that her house was on fire. Now, obviously, she feared what could happen to her daughter, uh, Salma Nathaniel. Uh, and then she ran home and discovered that her whole house was on fire. There was absolutely no way they could rescue baby Salma. Uh, this is what, what, what Gephard said. She also said that she left the pot cooking on the stove while she rushed to the market. So I'm assuming that obviously ignited yeah, the fire. Yeah. And obviously because they live in a shack, you know, and how shacks and fires work, it ignited into a whole big thing. And it culminated into this unfortunate and sad story. Very sad. Um, we have been having a bunch of fires over the past year, you know, in informal settlements uh, with yeah. shacks burning in, in the coast. Tualoloka. Yeah, Tualoloka. Obviously, there are shacks burning in Vinduk every third week, if not less or if not in a less space of time. Um, but again, it speaks, to, speaks what to the you rural <laughs> urban yeah. migration. Yes. You understand, if you mm. leave people in such situations where uh, there is no control of uh, basically anything, a lot of things can happen, yeah. such as this situation. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a sad story Very that they sad. couldn't go rescue the baby. Yeah. You know, but even if the baby was rescued, the baby would, would probably have many complications. Mm. You know, yeah. A burnt skin at such a young age, maybe... Um, you, not deformed lungs but you know affected lungs and uh, it's it's man it's unfortunate yeah obviously looks like there might be a possibility but i don't know i don't want to be a judge but uh, it says that uh, in investigation into the incident continues so we'll look if there's something that needs to develop on this story uh, but uh, what must be said as is that uh, this is was really a very sad story uh pre Power Nakashole bringing us that story um, on the 25th of August. Now it's it's I think obviously the main focus of this story is the baby. Yeah, the life was lost. Should have never happened. Should we say carelessly? Mm. It's Man, difficult. It's difficult. Yeah. We don't know what the situation yeah. actually was. Uh, you can read the article or ask for your power yeah. for that. Yeah. Um, but. We also have to be cognizant of the fact that this family lost their house. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I didn't it's actually. I, I'm looking at it yeah, from the baby's perspective. It's a double-edged sword now. You lost your your homestead, and now you've lost your baby, or what you call their homestead, because it's not really a home. Mm. And now you have an issue of having to deal with the police, Imagine. answering questions. Imagine. Yeah. It's it's. Ouch. And people suffer Ouch. in this country. Everywhere in the world that people suffer in this country. Yeah. It's, it's, it's crazy. Um, yeah, so, I mean, she says she doesn't know what caused the fire, but obviously if the pot was left mm. on the gas stove, then uh, I think it's, it's quick math to 
yeah, to figure out what had happened. Its buffoonery, its insensitivity is provocative and it belongs to the whole dustbin. Its intolerance is provocative, it undermines peace and democracy in this country. It belongs, it belongs only here. It's a threat. Let's move on to the last story. Uh, the former minister of sports, I cut the number, cut the number. Yes, that's him talking there in one of the uh, interviews that he's had with the media. He's been very, he used to be very, very, you know, instrumental in giving the media something to write about, something to Always quote something about. Juicy. Always something Always juicy. And um, he will be remembered. I think for me, it's uh, that uh, clip that I just played now about him tearing up a newspaper and everything. And also, yo, um, COVID is really, is, is really, really robbing us. I mean, I thought last year was uh, bad, but this year is just making last year look I like... I was shocked, uh, man. Yo. I was shocked because... If I'm not mistaken, KK was in the news, what, a good month and a half back, if yeah, not, yeah. Like maybe two. Yeah. I think I was making comments on the whole repatriation story. Yeah. Um, so even outside of government, even outside of his government responsibilities, yeah. this man was very vocal. Yeah. The man had a passion to help people, but also had a passion for social issues, which he was never, never shy to speak on, whether they were uh, indirectly sort of you yes. know, uh, attacking the party that he's from, or whether they were just speaking, um, you know, to to the to the reality of the day, and I think we have lost a a true true beacon in uh, Namibia's you know political hope. space. Yes, political space, but also every other space. But what I was trying to say is, we have lost the beacon in Namibia's hope to just keep on evolving and getting better yeah because even if a situation did become better because number because number would find a way to scrutinize any situation but not in a malicious way yeah just to say that look we can do better yeah even if you do give poor people 50 million dollars yeah you will pinpoint that one thing in the corner of a wall and say yeah. We could have done this better. Yeah. And he was never scared to say this is wrong. Never shy. This is wrong. Never ever shy. He was never scared to call people names. Such a passionate man. Yeah, man. man. Yes, um, yes. And of course, uh, the first citizen, the president of the country, was uh, for me was one of the first people that I saw, uh, the prominent people that that came out to you know uh, express sadness as well as uh, the leader of the opposition, Mark Henry Venani, uh, just among the few. I also saw the former minister of education, Katrina Anse Imara, saying that uh um the number was a hero and uh, also we've seen that um um he will be accorded a hero's funeral and it was good and i think this week we saw his memorial um uh, being uh happening so a very that's another sad one covid 19 has taken you know the best of namibians man the best 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 um, I mean, not to take away from the number story, but we also saw recently that um, former uh, deputy was a deputy prime minister, and also, also deputy SG of Swapo Bako was yeah, passed yeah. away. Yes. Um, I mean, it's just sad that this virus, this virus is playing Russian roulette basically yes. with everyone, you know. And it's, it's it's sad that it had to take, like I said, the beacon of um, you know the, the the train of you know the Namibian progression basically. Yes. I think that was and that is who Kazanambo Kazanambo was. Whether he was in party regalia, whether he was in casual regalia, he made sure that um, that um, you know we are always making progress as a country. Yeah. So it's quite sad to have lost him. Um, I sympathize with the Kazanambo family. I also express my heartfelt condolences. Karere nawa Kazanambo Kazanambo. Couldn't have said it better. Um, that's where we leave it today. It's been a very, very interesting, useful week. Of course, the most important thing that happened is we told it like it is. Thank you very much for joining us. Until next time, for me, Enoch. And myself, John Collin. It's a cheers. Bye-bye.